Hello, my name is Jason Johnson, and thank you for watching my videos. I hope you find them helpful. If you have any questions or feedback, you can leave a comment below, and I'll try to get back with you as quick as possible. This video is going to cover the Cisco Netacad IT Essentials Chapter 11 printers. So this is a uh, overview of the PowerPoint material for the Cisco Netacad IT Essentials course. I just want to give a, a word here or a note that, that this is not a detailed um, how-to guide. So we are not going to be going through in this video and how to how to actually install and configure printers. This is an overview of the material. So you should be taking, if you're watching this video, you're most likely taking the IT Essentials course uh, through a Netacad, uh, uh, an approved academy, and you've got an instructor and you've got full access to all of the material in that course. This video is just a supplement to that material. So j just uh, so you have that information. But what we're going to look at, uh, look at in this video is uh, common printer features, installing and config configuring printers, installing a printer underneath that, sharing printers, and then maintaining and troubleshooting printers. And if you haven't picked up yet, if you're going through these videos or you're going through the course, a common theme is the maintaining and troubleshooting. And that's uh, going to be common among all of the uh, chapters that we go through here. And it's repetitive because it's important. So you need, do need to know how to maintain and troubleshoot uh, adequately uh, in the IT field. So let's look at common printer features. Some common printer features that we have, uh, all printers use paper or they print with paper um, for, for the most part, or they have some type of paper or some type of printing mechanism. They're going to print on something. They don't print on rocks. Uh, they're going to print on some type of paper. So when you are looking at the different characteristics and capabilities of various different printers, you want to look at some things to consider. Uh, you don't want to go out and spend five to ten thousand dollars on a high-end copier printer fax machine. And who even uses faxes anymore? It's 2017. Uh, but if you don't don't want to go out and spend that kind of money on a uh, a high-end system, if you have a home office that you only need a little small laser printer and you're only going to print black and white uh, copies and you only need maybe like 150 dots per inch on the uh, quality. So you want to look at the capabilities. You want to look at the speed. You want to look at the um, color, whether you need color or whether you need black and white. If you don't need color printing, you don't need to purchase that. I don't do color printing at my house. I purchased a laser printer. Uh, it's a laser printer and uh, scanner, so I can scan documents in. I can print documents out, and it's uh, it's black and white. I've had it for about seven years now. Uh, it works wonderfully. Um, I've only had to replace the toner cartridge once or put a new toner cartridge in, and it runs about $70, $75 for the toner cartridges. And it's much cheaper than an inkjet printer and much uh, much more convenient because I'm not constantly uh, printing. And so when I had inkjet printers in the past, I would print. Um, I may go a month or two without printing, and I would go to print, and my inkjet cartridges would be jammed up or they would be uh, they would be uh, gunked up because they had uh, set for too long. So – you want to look at the different characteristics at what you need. What kind of quality do you need? What kind of reliability? Uh, a note on quality. You can buy a lower end printer if you don't need something high end. So if you're a small home office and you don't need a lot of printing capabilities, um, you might look at doing something along the lines. If you're setting up a, uh, if you're supporting uh, an end user or you're supporting a, a small home office, you might uh, look at one of the recommendations of just printing at a, a local print shop. That might be cheaper in the long run. Now, you're also looking at uh, cost of going and picking up those print jobs and things like that. So you just want to put all of that in consideration. You want to look at cost of ownership. And then when I was just making the comment about going out to a print shop, that's the cost of ownership. Let's say, for example, that you spend $100 on a printer, and then over the life of that printer, um, it's going to cost you another $100 in consumable fees and repair cost and things like that. But you can go spend $200. Uh, or let's say you go spend $150 on another printer, um, and the uh, the maintenance fees over the time are maybe like another $25. So you come out ahead in the long run on cost of ownership. So you want to look at the overall picture, uh, your return on investment, uh, and your total cost of ownership uh, for the uh, for the uh, item that you're purchasing. So uh, it's asking you here on the slide is can you name these connection types? You know whether it's a USB or a DB connection or a, a network uh, Ethernet connection there. Uh, with an RJ45, and those are different types of ways that you can connect your printer uh, and get printing capabilities. So let's look at the different types of printers. We have inkjet printers. Inkjets are probably the most common for home use or small home office. 
uh, use. Uh, you can purchase high quality printers in the in the inkjet range. You can also purchase some very low quality uh, inkjet printers on there. So you are going to get what you pay for. Uh, the inkjet printers use a spray technology. There's inkjet cartridges in there, and they they it's it's, it's spraying ink onto the paper, uh, and, and that's you know it's a jet of ink spraying, and that's why they call it an inkjet. Uh, the next uh, next one you have is a laser printer. Uh, those are using a laser to uh, burn or uh, create an image on the paper. Uh, it's using a laser beam to do that, and that's why it's called a laser printer. Uh, you have a thermal printer. These are a little bit older. Uh, if you've ever been to a, a store and they print out a little cash register receipt, uh, there are some um, cash, you know, retail cash registers that do those. Um, not a lot that I in my area that I've seen anymore. Uh, there are a few particular places you will know that it's thermal paper because it's usually got more of a yellow tint to it or over time and when i mean by over time i mean maybe like a month or two the paper will start yellowing really quickly uh, because of the uh, thermal properties of it or because of the properties of it uh, being thermal uh, paper it'll 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 age quicker it uses heat for image generation you have impact printers and yes there are still impact printers in use today in a lot of different places i've I uh, supported a company not just a few years ago uh, that was still using a dot matrix printer, and it was set up to an old DOS system for printing labels for their customers. And, it, and the system worked. Uh, they still got the ribbon. Uh, it, it has a carbon copy printing ability, so the print head strikes a inked ribbon, and then that puts the image onto the paper. So it's a uh, it's why it's called an impact printer. It's much like the uh, if you go out and search for the IBM Selectric or an old. Uh, 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 typewriter that used the uh, ink ribbon that would go across and it would strike it. It's the same type of technology. It's just a little bit more advanced in the uh, impact printers or the, what we used to call the dot matrix printers. They are still on the market. They are still out there. So you may come across those and uh, support uh, in your IT role. The last one it's going to talk about is virtual printing here. And this is what I strive to do in most of everything. Uh, uh, my printing is I try to print everything digital. Uh, print it to a, uh, an Adobe PDF or uh, print it to some other type of uh, – mainly Adobe PDF because that's – that's you at, at this time in 2017, the easiest way to read that. And you have uh, readers that can uh, pull those up. And there's a few other common – or a few other ways that you can print to digital, uh, but Adobe PDF is the most common. But you can send that print job to a file uh, for remote distribution in the cloud, and so you can put it out on a, a cloud server uh, for multiple people to be able to see that. Okay, so let's take a look real quick at installing and configuring printers. If you install and update a printer, uh, you always want to follow the manufacturer's recommendation for uh, installing a printer. Uh, when you're connecting it, you always want to make sure you read the manuals. I know in the IT world, we tend to sometimes just uh, break open a box or break open a, a new technology and we just start installing it. But you really do want to follow the manufacturer's directory because they are manufacturer's information because they do have it set up for a particular reason the way they do. Um, there's software that comes usually comes with those. It's, there's usually a CD. Uh, yes, I know it's 2017, but there's still CDs that are packed into those uh, into those printers. Um, however, I'm going to tell you my personal opinion is uh, you want to go to the manufacturer's website. And it's saying here on the note, too, to do that because that CD could have been in that box for up to a year, and the software potentially is going to be outdated. So you want to make sure that you go to the manufacturer's website so that you're getting the latest updates and the latest changes because there could have been something in that last uh, – since the time that that CD was printed and put into that box or CD was created and put into that box, uh, there could have been changes to the software, something critical even. And so you want to go to the manufacturer's website to get the latest information. Every printer uses a unique printer driver and software that allows that printer hardware to communicate between the printer and the commu computer, whether you know whatever operating system it is, it allows it to uh, to communicate between there. Uh, you have a PDL, and that describes the appearance of the document, and then PostScript is uh, which that allows the fonts and text types to be identical on the screen and on the paper. So what you see, or you, you get the WYSIWYG, what you see is what you get. So PostScript allows you to, you know, what, whatever you're seeing on the screen is what's going to actually print out on the paper. You also want to check regularly for printer driver updates from the manufacturer. Uh, when I'm when I set up a maintenance cycle for a company or when I'm in an IT support role and I set up a maintenance cycle, I, it, depending on the company and depending upon their printing needs, if it's a small home office, you might check it maybe once a year. It might be one of those yearly checkups that you do. Uh, or you check it if it's having problems. Uh, that, that's usually the two times that you're going to do that. But for the most part, 
printer drivers aren't going to update that mu that often. Uh, you're usually going to have a, a printer company get a printer working, um, and unless there's some major flaw or some major major something happen with it, they won't do a major printer driver update. They they might do little small tweaks and things. And if your printer is working, uh, you usually don't have to update the printer driver, but you always do want to check that in as part of your uh, maintenance cycle. And then after printer installation or printer driver updates, you want to print test pages to verify the printer is working properly. And then if it's not, you want to roll back the update if necessary. Now, I'm going to go on a little bit of, of a small rant here um, just because this is something that irritates me about IT support. Um, I've been in IT support roles in the past, and I can tell you that one of the things that I um, always tried to do is make sure that the customer's complaint or the customer's issue was totally fixed before you move on. One of the things that is very irritating to me as an end user um, is when an IT support uh, place, uh, you, you, they will open a ticket up, and we're going to use printers in this case. Let's say that my printer's not printing properly. Uh, and so I open up a ticket with IT support, and then you get an email from them going, okay, the ticket's been closed. It's been resolved. But they haven't even communicated with you. Uh, they haven't come down and, you know, and sat with you or made sure that, you know, and verified with you maybe even through an email or a text message and said, um, you know, is this problem solved? And they just go ahead and close the ticket because usually they're under some kind of time constraint to get tickets closed because that's what their performance is based on. But if you were in the IT support world, I'm just going to ask you to please make sure that your end user is 100% satisfied before you close tickets and before you move on. Uh, that's just um, some good, what I consider proper IT support in that area. Okay, so let's look at configuring options and default settings. We're looking at a uh, Microsoft Windows uh, operating system here, a dialog box. You can get this dialog box pull up and you can set uh, default printers uh, you can go in and do printer uh, preferences, printer options, um, and, and the, there's different options based upon the different printers or scanners or uh, fax machine or printers, copy or scanners that are out there. They can be configured using a global or per document method. So let's say that you want to set your printer to print all documents at uh, um, you know 150 dots per inch because you're trying to save toner and you don't need that high end quality for all of your documents, but you're going to have a presentation. And you want that to be a little bit more high quality or you want that to be high quality so you can change per document maybe up to a 600 dots per inch on your printer. So that's uh, something to look at there. So from the control panel in um, printers and faxes or devices and printer sections uh, in Windows 10, you can do a search. But the ITS, this IT Essentials course is focused on the A plus 901 or 900 series, which is uh, currently only focused on Windows 7 and Windows 8. So that's what you know we're seeing the Windows on here for. And so you can set uh, default printer settings for all print jobs and then, then go in and change maybe one print job at a time. Now, you can also optimize printer performance. Um, you can do that in a couple of different ways. Uh, the printer optimization is usually done through the software that's supplied with the printer driver. Uh, you can set printer spooling settings, uh, do color calibration. If you've got a color printer, sometimes you want to set the color calibration because the colors may, may not be um, – going on, on an image to the uh, paper or onto the uh, print job adequately. And so you have to do a color calibration on there, or you can set the pr paper orientation to make sure that it's feeding through properly on the printer. And some printers do update through hardware optimization. You can change hardware out. Sometimes you can add memory in depending on the size of the printer. Um, I've worked with printers in the past uh, where they had memory modules where you could add extra memory in so that the print spool could be larger and the copier uh, these were not copies. These were uh, large uh, Hewlett Packard printers, uh, but we could put memory on the actual printer so that the print spool wouldn't have to set out on the network printers. It could actually spool up inside the printer, and so it could uh, save save not so much save time, but it would save resources on the net, off the network. Okay, so let's take a look now at sharing printers. You can take printers and you can share. And one of the nice things about a uh, in 2017 is that you can use wireless technology to print to uh, printers. You don't have to connect into a network, uh, but you can uh, do a hardwired network printing or you can do wireless printing uh, if the equipment is set up to do that properly. Uh, so if you've got a Bluetooth, um, uh, a Bluetooth capable printer and you set that up and authorize that, then uh, somebody with a, a mobile device down in the bottom right-hand corner, they have a mobile device, and they don't really have an easy way to hook into uh, into the network uh, through a plugged-in because there's no you know there's no Ethernet plug on there, but they're connecting through the wireless or their uh, or Wi-Fi or they're connecting through Bluetooth. So you can add a Bluetooth printer onto uh, in there, and then that Bluetooth printer 
can then broadcast and accept print jobs from Bluetooth enabled devices. So shared printers can be connected using wired or wireless methods. And to connect a shared printer, you just navigate to the control panel, choose the printers, and then you add a printer in there. And then it's if it's broadcasting itself either on Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, then uh, uh, you can have the end user then come up and connect to that based upon uh, the authorization. You can also set authorization levels so that they might have to put a password in or something like that. And that's what we're going to take a look at on the next slide here. In usually in mid-size or larger companies, you're going to have print servers. And with print servers, uh, they have three functions. You can provide client access to print sources. You can queue and send print jobs, and you can provide feedback to account creation. Uh, or you can you can do account creation on the ne network print jobs. And there's a couple of different uh, in, in a couple of different uh, examples down here uh, where you can set up. And I'm going to use this one on the left hand side here. Let's say that you have your corporate network, and you've got a router in place, and you've got your switch here, and you've got a print server. And that print server then can receive print jobs from various you know users out here on the uh, corporate network, and they have authorization to log in or to send their print job to that print server. And then the print server then says, okay, I'm printing on printer A or, you know, printer A here. And so it's going to print it out on printer A. And those printers can be located in different locations, you know, that, or that could be floor one, floor two. And my handwriting is really bad with the mouse here. Three, um, really bad too. Let me make that a little bit smaller. Four, there we go. I'm trying to write, I'm trying to write with my mouse and it's not, not too easy. And so those can be located on different floors. They don't have to be located in the same place. And so user one over here can say they're on the fifth floor and they can say we're printing our print job. It'll go to the print server and then spool out to the uh, printer out there. And so it allows for the user can just send a print job. They don't have to wait on it. They could close their computer down. It's just in the queue and then they can go to the printer and then print that out. So there's three different types of uh, print services, print servers. You have software. Uh, you can set that up as software on a server, and then that controls all the printing jobs. Uh, you can set up hardware print servers. Um, they, they connect to networks and communicate with the printer directly, so you send it to a hardware actual print server, not an actual server with software on it, but an actual print server. And then you also have dedicated, and those are used in large networks with multiple LANs. Uh, a dedicated print server is just that that's all it does. It just receives print jobs, and it queues them out and goes to the particular uh, printer that it needs to go to. Okay, and another thing that you can do here is you can set up access based upon accounts. Uh, for example, you may have a company where you want to track which department is printing and how much they're and how much they're printing in a cost basis on that. Or you may have a public printing ability. Maybe you have a college and the student you want to give the students the ability to print, but you don't want to just have them print maybe ten thousand pages uh, all the time. So you give the students an account. They have to log in to be able to print, and they have so much money per print job. And so as they print, then uh, that gets uh, that gets accumulated towards their account, or they can pay for pay for uh, pay for print jobs on there. And so you can set up accounts to control who prints and where and what printer they go to. So you might restrict printing to the color printer because it's more expensive to print color. So you would create accounts um, account access to be able to go to color or not. Okay. So let's look at maintaining and troubleshooting printers. I'm going to go through this a little bit quicker here. Uh, well, no, on the pre preventative, preventative maintenance. Preventative maintenance is, is important with printers. Uh, you want to keep printers in a good condition. You don't want to just plug them in and start printing and never do anything with them. They are going to break quicker over time if you do not do preventative maintenance on them. They are much like a, uh, a vehicle. Whether you have a car or a bicycle, if you have a bicycle, you know that over time you have to oil the chain, you have to clean, you know, clean the chain, clean the gears, uh, do things like that. Otherwise, it's just going to it's, it's going to get bad quick. So you want to replace consumables using a manufacturer's recommendations. Um, I'm going to just give you an example here of of what I've seen in the workplace before. Uh, I worked at a company. We were replacing fuser units and that's a fuser unit. It looks like an HP printer there. We were replacing fuser units, and and I don't remember the exact cost, but I'm just going to say, you know, maybe it was running, you know, $150 for a fuser unit, and someone made the decision to go with cheaper fuser units, and so they were spending maybe like $50 per the fuser unit. But what happened was, instead of replacing the fuser unit every uh, every year, they were having to replace the fuser unit like every three months because the fuser units they were buying were a lower end. They were not manufactured recommended. They were not coming from the manufacturer. In this particular case that I'm using, it was an HP printer. They were not using HP's uh, fuser units. Someone was taking the old fuser units and re 
refurbishing them and then and then selling them back out on the market for a low cost and they were getting what they paid for. And so we over about a year period I realized that was happening and so I just went through and I figured out uh, what was the, what was happening with the cost and all and I went back to the you know the the purchasing department and the person that made that decision I said hey by the way you're spending more money buying these cheaper parts because you're up front you're not paying as much but your total cost of ownership over time is going to be more because you're having to replace them more often and not just that uh, or not just the actual cost of the of the fuser units it was uh, taking my time replacing the fuser units I was spending more time doing that and you know, the, even though the you know I was salaried, the company was paying for my time, and so instead of working on other projects, I was having to go replace refuser unit, replace fuser units more often. So the total cost of ownership was greater. So we moved back to using manufactured uh, fuser units on those. So you want to use the consumables that are recommended by the manufacturer. You want to keep the printer clean using the manufacturer's instructions. You want to clean the print heads on inkjet printers. Uh, you want to clean printers out every so often, especially the laser printers, because that laser toner is um, it's just a fine powder. If you've ever if you've ever changed or moved around with uh, or done anything with laser toners uh, and laser cartridges, there are there is laser toner dust that gets into the air. And if you do not vacuum that system out over time, uh, it's it's going to uh, gum up everything and it's and it's going to uh, uh, just just cause it have you you know create a bad time for you with your printer and you want to use a HEPA vacuum because if you use a vacuum that's throwing those particles back out of the air then you're possibly breathing those and that could be a hazard to you so you want to make sure that you're using a, an approved HEPA vacuum that's actually filtering that air uh, so it doesn't throw those uh, toner particles back out into the air and those are really fine toner tone that toner is really fine uh, particles and when it gets up in the air it's just like a dust cloud and it's it's just not good. And on uh, thermal printers, you can clean the heating element with uh, rubbing alcohol. You just want to be careful that if you're using some type of cotton swab that the cotton's not pulling loose and getting inside the, inside the printer there. You want to keep the environment dry and clean. Uh, humidity is a killer for printers. Uh, a big reason of that is because of the uh, paper. The, the paper will soak up that humidity and it will jam up in the printers. Uh, everything else will not work properly. Uh, you want to keep the gla glass clean. Uh, this is these are HP rollers here, but these rollers over time become smooth. They normally are just rubber, and they uh, if you've ever felt a cat's tongue, how rough it is, or you know, uh, it, it's like a rough uh, surface, like a uh, sandpaper. And over time, that roller gets uh, it's rubber, and it gets it gets worn down. And so if you start getting paper jams on your printer, then that's probably or could be a cause of uh, you know pickup rollers or rollers that move the paper through the printer becoming smooth and worn over time. Okay, so let's look at troubleshooting printer issues, and I'm going to go through this fairly quickly because this is what we keep going over week and week and week, or each one of the, or not week, but in each one of these videos uh, for the uh, uh, IT Essentials, and it's common, and we keep going back over it because it's important. So you want to identify the problem. You want to see what's happening with the printer. You want to establish your theory and probable cause. You want to test that theory, and then you want to establish your plan of action. And then you want to move into verifying that the full system functionality has been restored, implement preventative measures, document your findings, document your findings, document your findings. Yes, I said that three times because you want to document what happened so that the next person or you don't have to remember what happened. It's all documented of uh, what happened and the outcome and, and what happened with that so that you know for the next time uh, that it uh, can be repaired or can be uh, fixed easily. Now, some common problems and solutions for printers. Um, there are uh, printer problems are more common than others uh, because uh, in my work experience, uh, two, uh, printers can cause more problems than, than some other things just because there's moving parts with them. And so when you're sending paper through and you're doing print jobs and there's moving parts and things mechanical like that tend to break more often than non-mechanical parts. Uh, so printer problems are usually caused by hardware related, maybe parts breaking, rollers wearing out, things like that. Uh, they can be application related, so it could be that there was uh, some new software that was updated, or maybe a program is using a new print print spooler, you know, uh, or not a print spooler, but maybe it's using a new uh, way to try to print, or maybe there's a different type of font or something that's not reading properly. Uh, so it can usually um, be fixed by going to the manufacturer's website and updating the software, um, or looking at other configuration issues on there. Some common printer problems might include uh, the printer's powered off or in standby mode. 
uh, a user sends a printer to the print job and it never prints out because the printer, um, most printers today in 2017 are set with some type of energy saving uh, function so that over time they will put themselves in energy saving mode. And so they don't always wake up when they receive a print job like they're supposed to. Now, higher end printers will do that. They'll wake up and go ahead and print when they receive a print job, but some of them may not do that. Uh, the printer may not be printing, so you know you may be getting print jobs that are faded, checking the toner on that. Uh, printer jobs are doing unknown characters. You might receive a, The user might receive a message saying the document failed to print. Maybe the network printer is unplugged. Uh, you know, it, it, you know check, check simple things like that. Uh, if the printer is uh, printing incorrect colors, then you may have to do a color calibration. Okay, so this has been Chapter 11 printers for the Cisco Netacad IT Essentials. We've looked at uh, various types of printers and connections. We've looked at uh, printer installation. Uh, we've looked at how to share a printer, or not how to, but that how that you can share a printer on there. And we've also uh, talked about preventative maintenance. And so that wraps up this video for Chapter 11 on printers. Thank you for watching my videos. I hope they were helpful for you. Uh, thank you for subscribing to, uh, subscribing to my channel, if I can say that properly. Subscribing to my channel. And if you have any questions or comments, you can leave, leave those below, and I'll try to get back with you as quick as possible. Thanks, and hope you have a great day.